this part we're going to look at the letter of response. And response, of course, means answer a question. So we're going to answer an inquiry, thus a letter of response or response letter. Let's just jump right into it and see how that works. This letter is going to have three paragraphs. Let's go ahead and look at each paragraph and see what we should write. The first paragraph is going to reference the letter of inquiry. So when you received an inquiry, you have a subject line that, for example, said question about product or inquiry about price. You need to reference that and the date being very specific. So you're going to say, thank you for your email of December 20 or thank you for your letter of January 10. So you give a date and you give a subject and that tells the receiver what are you talking about. Don't just send an answer to a question and I receive the answer. I'm like, what is this? It's an answer but I forget the question or I don't know who wrote the question. I don't know what it's about. So you need to reference it. Tell clearly what it was about, who it came from, what the date was, things like this. Let's go ahead and look at an example here, which is very helpful to make this very, very clear. Thank you for your letter of July 20, in which you express an interest in purchasing one of our A400 tractors. So you see here, we have a date. You sent me a letter and this was the date. Where did this date come from? Is this the date I received it or is this the date you sent it? This is the date of the date line. So this is the date inside the letter, the date line. So they maybe wrote this on July 20, but maybe they sent it on July 25. I don't know. But anyway, this is the date I have. If it's an email, then it will be the, day, the date of the email being sent, which because email is almost instantaneous, it'll be the same time you receive it. So you need to check the date that it was sent, received, and write that down. So that's that date. It's not just any date. That's not today's date that I answer right? Maybe you sent this email to me on July 20, but I go ahead and I answer it on July 30. Okay, but this date is not important, right? Totally not important. All that matters is to let you know I'm answering your letter and your letter was July 20. And your letter was asking about this subject here. So that helps. That really helps that helps the receiver see what is this answering? What is this in response to? Let's look at example number two. I was glad to receive your letter of October 10. Mr. Gates informed me of his meeting with you and I was awaiting communication from you. New Win Cosmetics is the largest cosmetic manufacturer in the American Southeast and is eager to expand to overseas markets. So here we can see we have two things. We have the date of the question, the date of the inquiry letter, and the topic, the subject of the inquiry letter. So one, two, two important key points. Now, of course, inside this paragraph, we also stay positive and try to say something good about our company, something good about our service to sound positive. A response letter should be very positive, trying to make your company make you sound very good to the person who wrote the question. Let's look at paragraph number two. In paragraph number two, very simple, we answer the question. And a key point here is when you answer the question, there's something you have to always remember to do in business. And that is you must stay positive. Positive, positive, happy, happy. Even if the question does not have a positive answer, maybe they ask you a question and the answer is no. You should be careful and not just say no, but try to make it positive. Say, we don't do that now, but maybe we'll do it in the future. We don't have that now, but we have another product you may like, right? Positive, positive, stay positive. It's always hard for people 
who just begin doing business to remember, be positive, stay positive, even if the answer is actually negative. Let's look at a couple examples here. Now, if the question was very detailed, had lots of parts, then the answer can also be very detailed and have lots of parts. The first one here is consumer to business, so it's very straightforward. I have included some material. Now this is very useful, this include. So you can include like a catalog, uh, direct mail advertisement, DM. You can include electronic material. You can send them a, a sample or a demo. And so all of these things you would say, I've included that. And here we go ahead and we explain a little bit. The A400 me, uh, fits your needs perfectly. So staying positive, trying to sell the product. In the B2B example, business to business, you can see we have broken down the answer to parts. Because when they asked the question, their question had a number of parts, a little bit more complicated. And each question we answer in detail. So for example here, number one, we would like to market our Love Sick line, that's a line of products in Taiwan. This line includes perfumes, cosmetics, and soap. So this was answering what kind of products are you selling? And then here, what is your marketing budget? What is your marketing information? What is your strategy? We answer that question here. And the last question is, what is your plans for this situation in the future? And we go ahead and we stay positive here also. We have not completed our plans on this matter, but we would expect to keep profit margins approximately equal to what they are in our domestic operation operations, which is 3.4%. So they're answering the question about their strategy for the future and their expansion, and they're being very clear. This is a business to business question. And so it's trying to say, can we buy from you? Can you sell to us? And here's the answer. This is our plan. This is what we do. I'm letting you know and staying positive. Okay, so that's the second paragraph. What about the final paragraph, the third paragraph? In this paragraph, we're gonna to try to stay positive and thank the reader, thank the person for asking the question. And then we're also going to try to encourage a relationship. Remember in business, it's important to get that relationship going, right? We wanna keep it going. So if someone sent me a question, this is a great opportunity for me to create a relationship with them. Even if they're not going to buy my product now, maybe there's an opportunity in the future. Maybe there's something that we can exchange or change and make a different deal. So here I'm gonna be very positive and invite future communication. So let's take a look at this example here. Let me thank you again. So that's one part. Thank you. So that's one. Good. A thank you. If the information I have included is not satisfactory or you have any other questions, please feel free to contact me. And that's the second part, which is invite future communication. Let's look at the B2B where this is even more important. Thank you again for your inquiry. So there's the thank you, number one part. I know we can cooperate on a successful venture to market New Win Cosmetic products in Taiwan. When there are any other developments in this matter, please contact me personally. So they're saying contact me personally. Go ahead and don't hesitate, contact me. So it's inviting a future communication. So that's the letter of response. A response letter has three paragraphs reference, answer the question, and thank you, invite future communication.